also probably the least heavily vested in the stock market that I've been in the last, since 08, 09 probably. So I backed it down to probably about 30% allocation into equities. Now I've just been taking profits on the way up and we're down to somewhere 25 to 30% right now vested in what I would normally have vested or maximum have vested in the stock market. So we're backpedaling. Uh, we're backpedaling just because there's a new there's a new sheriff in town. Uh, I mean, that's all there is to it. And I think you're gonna see a new set of uh, political rules. So, I, you know, I think, let me go back here, slide for you. <laughs> you know, I think we'll, we'll just leave it there. I mean, this is the question. This is the, the wild card in play right now for everyone is, how does it play out with Putin as we move forward? There's a chart, and I'll talk about this for a minute. The Russian troops are assembling more towards uh, on the border of, of Europe. You've had Germany make the statement, if Russia moves any troops in, there's going to be an issue. The issue stems from this. Let's go back and review a little bit. The Brexit vote that took place, all right, why it's so significant. We believe the European Union is going to break up. The Brexit vote was that trigger. Now, all of a sudden, you have votes taking place in Italy, France, Portugal, Spain to break up the European Union. When Putin sent peacekeeping troops into Crimea, okay, the, he said he was sending people in to help those that wanted to leave. The talk is he wants to send troops into countries in Europe that want to break away from the European Union. So as you see some of the non-traditionalist vote to break away, there's talks that he could send peacekeeping troops into those areas. Germany has said if we see any troops or any people that look like they could be troops come into these areas, we're going to put an end to it. And we'll have NATO behind us. Now, here's your question. What, what does Trump say? What, what's Trump say to NATO? If NATO asks Putin, you can't come across the line, Putin's going to see what we say. If Trump says, I don't want to send our kids into battle and fight your war, which I suspect that's what he says, which is fine, then we have to ask, we suspect Putin just laughs somewhat at NATO and his request to not move across. Now, that's the big wild card. Remember, all world wars started in Europe, not in the Middle East. We've had 28 years of peace in Europe, longest set of longest time period for peace we've ever seen in Europe. So, I suspect this area is what's ripe for a problem and what's ripe for headlines. So, remember, the world's changed in our, our space as far as hedge funds and trading is concerned. It's all event-driven and headline-driven. So, the algos, quants, high-frequency guys just trade the headlines. Well, this will be, it'll make for big headlines. If you look at Right there, the blue dot, Syria. This is another complication. Oil used to always come out of Saudi Arabia and turn right and left. It would turn right to go to the United States. Now, since we're drilling and doing all the fracking we're doing, it only goes to the left. Russia used to supply most of the energy to Europe. Still does. Saudis want to run a pipeline, or have been trying to, right through Syria. That's our, what we hear, you know, Russia may say they're in Syria to stop ISIS. We suspect Russia's stopping a pipeline from going through into Europe. And it'll be interesting to see how those relations with Trump and Russia play out. Uh, so I don't know. I just think you have new world order, so to speak. There's a change in the regime, and how that world order plays out is going to drastically impact us in the ag space. Remember, guys, when... Putin invaded uh, uh, Ukraine and Crimea two, two and a half years ago, three years ago. Wheat prices jumped eight bucks overnight. I mean, wheat prices popped. So we believe if you get a similar type of movement out of Russia or Putin, you, you're going to get a pop in wheat. We think if wheat clears, then you got the way for corn to, to move fairly aggressively higher would be my guess. So that's a... Uh, that's a good headline. I mean, that's a headline that we'll want to see and, and pay close attention to. The reason being, some of our biggest, stiffest competition in the wheat market and corn has come from the Black Sea region. 
which is Ukraine, uh, Russia, Romania. If we start to see problems in those areas, I would hold off and be a little hesitant to price any bushels at that moment. I wouldn't be too hesitant, though. So uh, you'll see my theme kind of as we move along, and I'll talk a little bit more about it.